Good evening, everybody. We're going to talk about the state of the tropics, focusing on the Atlantic. I'm going to kind of do this map discussion style like I do when I'm giving a map discussion at work, where we start by looking at the large scale and then get to some of our individual systems of interest. Uh, but just to give a little context, um, we are here in late July, so somewhere right about here. So we're sort of coming up to the part of the season where things um, historically start to ramp up, although you really don't typically see a big ramp up till the middle of August here. Um, so it's coming um, over the next few weeks, uh, most likely. So if we look at where we're at, uh, as far as the large scale pattern, again, the SST anomalies are a good thing to look at um, here. So we have um, a few things stand out. Um, we have the um, generally cool neutral Pacific um, and, and negative PDO. We have this huge warm blob off the coast of Japan that really dominates um, in the Atlantic, we kind of have this um, warm horseshoe, but it's sort of north of your classic positive AMO. Um, the MDR has warmed, um, we'll show that in a minute, but it's still sort of near average if you look overall. And um, so it's, you know, we, if you look across the globe, we see a lot of heat in the, uh, in the mid latitudes here. We see, you know, kind of across the board. Um, and so that's uh, something we typically um, see after, you know, a couple years after El Nino. And, um, it tends to sort of cause stability and, and some subsidence issues in the deep tropics um, in the northern hemisphere. And so um, you may see that kind of across the tropics this year. Um, but if we look at sort of the change, uh, we have seen warming in the Atlantic um, in the M MDR here and, and off the coast of Africa. So that's a, a positive indicator in terms of, you know, likely it, um, to favor development as we head into August. Um, not quite as cool as we were uh, a few weeks ago. Um, but one reason we're quiet right now is that the MGO, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, um, remember we talked about that large-scale pulse of tropical convection. Right now, the, the rising motion is, is over the Pacific and Indonesia, starting to slide east, and we have subsidence, basically, that's sinking the brown over Africa and the Atlantic, and so that um, leads to uh, reduced uh, hurricane formation um, and really just reduced convection overall. But if you look, models are showing that that pulse will be coming east. Um, you kinda, it kind of um, is split up into a couple of, of different um, Kelvin waves, but just this general envelope is sliding east um, with enhanced rising motion. And then behind it, you also have more favorable upper level winds. And so um, we'll talk in a minute that you know this first pulse, which will be moving across the Atlantic in about a week or so, could be something to watch for in terms of uh, you know, giving us a, a potential spin up. We look at some of our large scale factors, um, you know, the Caribbean shear is something we talked about earlier, how it was running a lot higher than normal. Um, it's actually come down to near average now. Um, so lower, but still um, still a little bit too hostile for development. Um, so we'll see if that changes over time. Um, the one that's factor that's, I think, been probably the most um, hostile, in, at least in the Eastern Atlantic, and will continue to be for a bit is the stability. And basically what stability is, it's a measure of how easy it is for air to rise. And so when it's below average, that means that it's hard to get rising motion. Um, it's hard to get clouds and thunderstorms. Um, and we see that uh, reflected here with the, um, basically we're below average and it's been kind of flat. Um, we're basically sort of like, about like you would be on average in May. Um, so as SST is warm, you know, as the water's warm, we're trying to maybe climb up a little bit toward average. Uh, but sort of the large scale sinking air across the basin is making it hard to get convection. And that, that could be a problem that could persist with us for a while. In terms of actual individual systems, the only one being monitored by NHC right now is this um, low over the Gulf. We've kind of had the, this pattern um, where we've had a lot of uh, you know, big ridge of high pressure here over the Eastern US. And we've had these um, storms cut off underneath it. Remember we had Chantal come up here. We had um, 93L, which tried to develop, it didn't quite get there. And then we also have, we have had a kind of a similar one here um, moving into uh, Texas and Louisiana, bringing some heavy rain, but um, it's not, it doesn't really look like it's in any hurry to develop. And now if we look at the um, precipitable water, you can kind of see, um, again, you, you have your um, Gulf moisture over here. Let's get the different color. So you have your Gulf moisture here with that system. You have your ITCZ, and we'll look at some of these systems in a minute, um, some of these waves. Kind of got some drier moving in from the northeast, and that, that's another uh, problem that some of these waves have are going to have. Um, we kind of, not to get too nerdy, but we have this pattern. You can kind of see it in the, the precipitable water here. You have this um, pattern here that kind of a big um, ridge and then um, a trough dipping underneath. This is called wave breaking. And when this happens, you can bring in these troughs and with dry air and sometimes shear into the eastern Atlantic. And so this is something that may hinder some of our waves uh, as they try to come off. 
But again, just looking at the Gulf now, um, kind of to go from system to system. Um, so some impressive thunderstorm activity along the coast here. Um, we'll bring some heavy rain, and certainly, you know, we've seen in Louisiana and Texas, you don't need a very strong storm to cause flooding issues. Um, but this, as this moves into Texas, hopefully um, the rain won't persist for too long, and it, it doesn't look like uh, we're going to get any kind of uh, tropical development with this. So now we're going to look out in the Atlantic, um, in the central Atlantic. So this is um, 700 millibar vorticity, so um, low to mid levels um, spin. A couple systems to note. The, the first is this wave. Um, right now it's out, I think, right here. Yeah, right here. Um, not much convection associated with it right now. Um, then as we, so if we look at the forecast, you can see GFS uh, over time kind of tries to spin it up. It's, it's very small. Um, uh, you know, this looks kind of like a so-called GFS special where it's sort of just randomly spinning something up. Uh, model, most models don't really do a whole lot with that. Uh, but then if you look at the uh, a following wave coming off in a few days, uh, this one might be something a little more to watch. Um, the GFS um, basically brings it into the Southern Caribbean in about eight to nine days, so a little far out. Um, but you notice there's this big mid-level ridge to the north, and so you have this really fast low to mid-level flow and if you look at that, what that does as it approaches the islands, uh, even if though the upper level winds are, are pretty light, because you have this really strong low to mid level flow, you have um, pretty mar uh, marginally hostile shear. Um, you know, 17 knots, 2850, probably even a little more than that if you look at the mid levels. And so that's going to make it hard for this to, to develop convection if it stays um, that far south and sort of in, a, in the faster flow. The ECMWF um, kind of has the same system, uh, a fairly similar configuration overall. Uh, but because it gets a little further north, the, the ridge is oriented um, a little bit more uh, southwest, northeast. So it's, it's able to get up um, north of the islands, which would be, I think, a little bit more favorable for it. Um, and the upper, the shear is, is not quite as bad um, as a result of that. But the other issue that this one's going to be struggling with is dry air. Remember we talked about that dry air from the northeast Atlantic is going to be piling in, and some of it's going to probably try to wrap around any system that forms. So um, you have a very small pocket of moisture here. And, and so uh, maintaining convection and moisture is going to be critical for any storm to have any chance of surviving um, in the long term. But I will say if we do get a storm that moves up into this region, we'll show in a minute, that, that could be a little bit more of a favorable spot for some development. And you know, go look at the uh, some of the AI models are doing some crazy things with it. You know, we have some some ridging um, over the southwest Atlantic. This is a little bit too far out in the future to to, to pay much attention to. But yeah, basically if you get into the uh, the seven, you know, the longer medium to long range, you kind of have a more favorable upper pattern here over the Southwest Atlantic, and so that's why some of the long range ensembles are uh, responding to that by showing. Um, let's see if we can zoom in, but basically, yeah, you can see they're kind of all in this general idea of something developing out here in the Central Atlantic and then bringing it up here toward the Southwest Atlantic. Beyond that, like I said, upper level winds are more favorable here. Steering is is to be TBD. You know, there'll be some. Crazy posts on social media with certain models, you know, trying to hit Florida or going up the East Coast, but it's way too early to say anything like that. And like I, like I mentioned, there's there's a lot of uh, hostile hostile conditions that it first has to sort of get through in the in the uh, Central Atlantic, the dry air, the stability, all that sinking. So I think you know, there's a pretty good chance something just dies out off here. But if you do get a stronger system to sort of come up here, um, I'll show in a second that we could have a little bit more of a problem because. This is um, basically day eight, nine. So this is sort of at the edge of our, our reliable range. And this is 200 millibar wind. So this is an ensemble mean. So you know, our system will be somewhere in this vicinity. And what you have, remember I talked about that wave breaking. So for systems out east, that would be a problem. But where this is, that actually is going to cause um, air to flow out away from the storm. You got another outflow channel with this ridge over the US and, and even more um, with this potentially this trough, this jet dipping down here. And so light winds upper level winds near the system and a lot of outflow um, so anything in this region would have the chance to develop pretty quickly it's just a question of whether you get a storm strong enough to take advantage or if, you know because there's just a weak wave here it may not really take much advantage of it lastly i wanted to show the um, google ai uh, this is a new ai model they've been really working hard on this they're working with nhc to um, test it so i'm just curious to see how it's how it, it you know what it's predicting and it looks like their ensemble actually does kind of show something similar to the Euro ensemble where, you know, quite a few members are, are trying to develop something and bringing it up into the uh, Southwest Atlantic, some stronger ones. You know, you can see there's huge spread. At, um, you know, this is getting out to day 10. You know, you could have something from near the Caribbean islands to way off in the central Atlantic. So 
you know, don't take any single forecast seriously. Um, just know that, you know, we're getting toward the peak of season. Um, the conditions could be favorable here. And, you know, there's one other thing I guess I should point out is if you go back to the SSTs, um, the some of the warmer, warmest anomalously warm water in the basin is, is in that southwest Atlantic region as well. So, you know, if you get something in that region in day 10 or so and it's developed, you know, it's a strong wave or, you know, a tropical storm, you could see some intensification, something to keep an eye on. Um, but for now, obviously, things are quiet and will probably remain that way for at least the next week or so. So uh, that's all for now and stay safe, everybody.